the battery is flat again. I only run the drone for 15 minutes. It will be cool if I could fly this drone for 2 hours without recharging it. Do you think it's possible? Hmm, let's find out. Today I am going to tell you about batteries running on hydrogen and also about how to make a do-it-yourself oxygen-hydrogen fuel cell. I think you all know that hydrogen is an extremely flammable gas, capable of releasing a lot of energy when reacting with oxygen. During the last few years, hydrogen is receiving more and more attention due to its portability and energy intensity, which can be used to extract energy, just like petrol. One of hydrogen's advantages is that it is a renewable source of energy, which can be extracted from water, for instance, using solar cells' electricity. The same can be said about petrol. For instance, a Stirling engine or an external combustion engine can easily be started with a hydrogen burner. It can even be used to light up a small light-emitting diode, which faintly lights the room. Still, the efficiency of such a setup is quite low, because most of the heat is lost, for instance as a result of friction, etc. In theory, an external combustion engine can run on hydrogen, thus increasing its efficiency, but the engine won't run long in such a regime. To ensure safety and stability of their operation, such engines should have more robust cases and slightly different specifications. That is why the most effective way of generating energy from hydrogen is by using so-called fuel cells, which were invented back in the middle of the 19th century by a British scientist William Robert Groove. He connected two platinum plates to an electric circuit. Then he started to blow one of them with oxygen and the other with hydrogen. It turned out that the emitter detected changes in the intensity of electric current. Thus, oxygen and hydrogen oxidized without burning on the platinum plates, but rather releasing energy in the form of electricity. Later such fuel cells began to be improved until in the 1940s a working 5 kW hydrogen battery was made. Now I am going to show how to make a working prototype of such a do-it-yourself hydrogen fuel cell. To do that, first we need to make a platinum electrode we will use for oxidizing hydrogen and generating electricity. If you didn't know, metallic platinum is a great catalyst, which means it increases the rate of chemical reactions. For instance, if we pass a stream of propane through a heated platinum wire, it will start oxidizing on the surface of the wire, and at a significantly lower temperature that it will burn under normal conditions. Since pure platinum is too expensive to make electrodes from, a thin platinum film on the surface of another metal will suffice for my experiment. I am using such a nickel sponge sheet as a base for my platinum electrode, because platinum coats this metal quite smoothly and without coming off it. Besides, because of this sponge sporous structure, the surface area is maximized and the obtained catalyst will be extremely effective. Before going platinum plating, we need to remove grease and prepare the surface of the nickel sheet, which is why First, I lowered strips of the nickel sponge into an ultrasonic cleaner filled with soap solution. After cleaning nickel for 10 minutes, I am lowering these strips of nickel into a 50% alcohol solution in order to remove vestiges of soap and dirt. When running ultrasonic cleaning, cavitation bubbles have been released. Make sure that all the dirt is removed from the pores of the nickel sponge. When the strips dried, I got two clean electrodes. Next, for coating the nickel electrode with platinum, I am using a quite expensive chemical called chloroplatinic acid, costing 19 euros. Because this substance easily absorbs moisture from the air and melts, it is stored in sealed ampules. We will need an extremely weak solution of this substance, just 7 mmol per liter. 
That is why, first of all, I'm dissolving 1 gram of chloroplatinic acid in 15 milliliters of water. Fortunately, this chemical dissolves very well in water. And after that, I'm pouring 9 grams of this solution into another beaker, increasing the volume of the solution to 200 milliliters. Now I'm lowering a pretty expensive and durable titanium electrode covered in iridium and ruthenium oxides into the obtained light yellowish solution. Such electrodes are used in gold and rhodium plating in order for the reaction to run more smoothly and for the solution not to get taint in such an aggressive medium. By the disintegrating anode to do platinum plating, I'm lowering a purified nickel sponge into the solution and starting to run electricity through it, using my laboratory adapter. During this process, platinum is slowly covering the surface of nickel, creating a very thin gray layer because of its slightly grainy structure. It took me 20 minutes to cover one electrode with platinum. After that, I am lowering it into distilled water in order to rinse off vestiges of the electrolyte. In some time, I got such two platinum electrodes for hydrogen batteries of quite good quality. The dark areas are completely covered in pure platinum. The next stage is making a case for such a hydrogen fuel cell which I am going to make from two syringe cases. To increase their efficiency, I have attached two valves to them, which in the future will help me to run oxygen and hydrogen through my setup more smoothly. Now I am soldering one platinum plated electrode to each syringe case using epoxy resin, on top of which I am going to run chemical reactions. This seemingly unremarkable film, called Nephion, is the most important component of my hydrogen battery. They are sold as sandwiches in between two protective plastic layers. If we take a look at its chemical structure, from a chemical point of view, it resembles Teflon, which is used to cover frying pans. The difference through is that several sulfur groups are added to the Teflon skeleton, enabling such a film to pass protons through it, which are hydrogen ions. Soon you will learn how important this property is. After separating nephion film from the protective plastic layer, it needs to be sandwiched in between the syringe cases, which I am also going to glue together. The epoxy resin hardens in 30 minutes, and after that we can test my do-it-yourself hydrogen fuel cell. For the first test, I am going to use a balloon filled with hydrogen, then using a special burner. I began to supply hydrogen into the lower part of my setup because this gas is lighter than air and it will be rising up towards the platinum catalyst. The upper syringe case will be filled with just air, 20% of which is oxygen, and I think it will be enough for my experiment. As I start supplying hydrogen, we can notice that the multimeter shows how the voltage is beginning to increase, and it means that my setup works. In some time, the voltage reached 0.7 volt and remains more or less stable at this level. When I supply air through the upper part of the cell, the voltage slightly changes, but not for long. So, what is happening here and how does this hydrogen fuel cell work? To explain in simple terms, electricity in my cell is generated in the very middle here at the interface of the two platinum electrodes, upon closing of the circuit. When hydrogen is streamed into the lower part of the setup, towards the surface of the lower platinum electrode, it gives off its electron, which runs through the wire, the ion of hydrogen being created, or in other words proton, which passes through that very nephion film and ends up on the upper electrode. There it is oxidized by the oxygen in the air and receives the electron from the other electrode, creating water. As a result, the lower electrode is negative or is an anode and the upper electrode is positive or in other words is a cathode. In some time, there even condensed some water on the upper part of my setup which is the main byproduct of this battery. My cell generates 
0.7 volt out of 1.3 theoretically possible. However, the intensity of current isn't very high, being just 15 mA. That is why, unfortunately, I won't be able to connect anything to my hydrogen battery. The only way to increase the energy conversion efficiency of my battery is to make a more concentrated source of hydrogen. For instance, to use sodium borohydrate solution instead. This compound can frequently be encountered at organic synthesis laboratories. It is often used for reducing organic compounds, because sodium borohydride easily gives off its hydrogen. It does it so easily that when dissolved in water, we can even see how bubbles are gradually being released from the sodium borohydride solution because this chemical isn't stable in water and quickly breaks down. In some recent researches, scientists even claim that this chemical can be used as a compact and effective preservative of hydrogen instead of gas cylinders, but only in the form of dry powder. If I turn my setup upside down and pour some sodium borohydride into the upper part of the cell, I'll immediately see how the multimeter detects an increase in the voltage, because in this case I am pouring concentrated hydrogen right on the electrode. Thus I can achieve high efficiency of my do-it-yourself hydrogen fuel cell, having reached the maximum possible voltage. Unfortunately through, not even sodium borohydride can increase the intensity of the electric current, because my battery is too primitive. Because I cannot make a more efficient and beautiful fuel cell, to continue my experiments I had to resort to the help of my Chinese friends and other more advanced models. In some time I received such a fuel cell. Let us see what's inside it. Having taken it apart, I noticed that the manufacturer simply uses a metal mesh as an electrode. I'm not sure if it's steel or nickel, but there is definitely no platinum plating here. Then, underneath the gasket, I saw that the nephion film is covered in a layer of graphite. Evidently, its fibers are already saturated with platinum catalyst, or the film itself is covered in platinum nanoparticles. It's hard for me to say for sure. Obviously, this is how efficiency of such a battery is increased and such an industrial sandwich is much more efficient than my primitive hydrogen fuel cell. I have also purchased another fuel cell for my next experiments and it hasn't been taken apart in order to make sure that it works normally. If we pass hydrogen through one side of this fuel cell, we can see the voltage and the intensity of the electric current, which is impressively high. If we connect this device to a testing setup, we can see that enough electricity is being produced in the hydrogen fuel cell to even rotate a small motor. Of course, this sample is just for demonstration purposes, and it doesn't boast high efficiency, but still it looks interesting. Besides using a balloon filled with hydrogen, we can also supply hydrogen directly using electrolysis of water. To do that, I ordered such a small electrolyzer from a Chinese manufacturer, the design of which resembles that of hydrogen fuel cell, but works the other way around. When electric current is applied, water can break down into oxygen and hydrogen. More than enough gases are produced to generate a sufficient amount of electricity to keep the motor rotating. In some time, we can see that there is some moisture being condensed around the place where oxygen is supplied. The obtained water is a main byproduct of such a cell. Frankly speaking, the efficiency of this device isn't that high, because it takes about 10 times more energy to obtain hydrogen than to generate electricity. In general, through, it works well for demonstration purposes, and this setup clearly shows how to generate electricity from hydrogen. Usually manufacturers make multiple cell batteries consisting of multiple layers of such hydrogen cells, which increase efficiency of such batteries. In theory, if a normal industrial electrolyzer and super-efficient fuel cell setup are used, 
the total energy conversion efficiency will be at best 55%. But if we compare efficiency of such batteries to the 99% efficiency of lithium-ion batteries, their efficiency pales in comparison, doesn't it? But sometimes distance of light matters more than efficiency. For instance, that's true when it comes to drones. For example, if I hand a cylinder with only 30 grams of hydrogen to my drone, it will be able to fly over 3 hours without refueling. The same is true of electric vehicles. Just take an extra hydrogen cylinder with you, and you are guaranteed to have a long distance trip and easy refueling. Nowadays, modern manufacturers make cars which can drive up to 600 km on a single fill up with hydrogen fuel, the cost of which is comparable with that of petrol. If that is the case today, when hydrogen production is only just beginning, I think in the future the price will drop significantly because of the increased production volume. Besides, if the future electricity generated by hydroelectric power plants, wind turbines and solar panels, the energy produced as a result will be practically free. The only issue facing such hydrogen cells is their high price. Because they use expensive platinum catalysts, nowadays the cost price of manufacturing hydrogen-powered cars and drones is quite high. However, as hydrogen fuel cells are further optimized and mass-produced, in some time their price will drop. And in the future, similarly to how it works today, many will be driving cheap and eco-friendly hydrogen-powered cars. So, if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And also support my channel on Patreon to see in the future more new and interesting videos.